say um, before we kind of jump in. Um, I think Patrick. I think yeah, I'm good. Hey, real. there we go. So apparently my internet likes to um, crash right right as we start these calls. It's like two or three weeks in a row where we've had great internet all week and then it just crashes. So sorry to everyone about that. I know a lot of you guys probably know Shiv. I didn't hear the introduction, but um, Shiv is uh, Shiv is somebody you definitely want to listen to. He's been, like you said, he's been around this game for a long time. He is responsible for a lot of success for a lot of people and um, the growth of, you know, a group that a lot of us were formerly a part of. Um, so Shiv is going to share something that um, a lot of you guys, a lot of you guys may not know. I, I know that those of you that know Shiv, it's easy to just assume that He's an expert in everything he does, which like that's I kind of find fall into that category a little bit. Um, but they're like within that, he has a strategy that um, we've seen firsthand has been very successful for choosing the right cities and niches. And I know that um, you know we like it, it's it's something I've kind of struggled with in, in a couple of years as we kind of have this where in our agency we don't get to pick our niches a lot of times because we get a lot of referrals and sometimes i think maybe maybe it'd be better if we just turn down the referrals and chose the cities that were the easiest to work in because we can always find the business if you choose the right city so i think a big part of this game is choosing the right city in the right niche and what you guys are about to see i think is um i mean it's you can't underestimate or overestimate the value you can't overestimate the value of this it's spending the extra time up front can save you months and months down the road, save time and money, right? We've had places where we've received like a really warm referral and it's taken us a year to rank. And then when we've got to pick, we've been able to rank within a month or so, right? So um, a lot of you guys that are struggling, you're probably doing a lot of things right and you might be doing this wrong. So I think it's important to watch this video Rewatch this video and, um, you know, really kind of get up to speed with it. So Shiv has a, a little favor to ask for some of you guys. So if you guys, he's kind of put together a, this is going to be, um, this is going to be us kind of riffing and he's going to go through his system and kind of provide this training, but he's, he's going to prepare a, a more formal training with this video, with this content on it. And, um, I know Shiv to be one of the most um, trustworthy and respectful people. And I don't know of very many people at all that would disagree with that. And I know we have a lot of mutual friends, but for one reason or another, it appears that there's been some like um, some just complete nonsense that was published on the internet. And, um, you know, it's a review site. And, um, you know, if you would like to get that training, then, um, we're going to have a Calendly link that we're going to share. Let's do a 10 minute call with, with Shiv. He's not pitching you anything. There's nothing for sale. This is not, it's not anything like that. I know that a lot of you guys are used to that. That's not what this is. So he's just going to step you through. There's a certain thing, certain way to kind of handle this. And um, you know, it's going to help um, boost his reviews on, on just mention the character of who he is and, and what you know about him. We're not asking yep. for, for those of you who don't know when like, you know, do it or don't do it based on what you see. It's not, it's not a requirement, but I know a lot of people on here know Shiv well. And um, just, you know, maybe those people reach out to him, schedule a 10 minute meeting and, and then share your experience about this so that, you know, he doesn't really have this black mark going forward on the internet that's being um, broadcast out there by, you know, uh, it's, it's just complete. No, I don't want to dive too deep into it, but it's just complete nonsense. And, and we're just going to uh, deal with it like that. So, Shiv, yeah. Um, anything to add, or are we ready to we ready to blast off? No, no. Um, yeah. Basically, you know, um, I'm more than happy to give. There's nothing I charge. I don't want to charge. Um, if anything, I just need Larry. Like I said, five minutes of your guys' time. So I'll have a calendar link at the end of this, and in return, I'll give you a free training, worksheets, all the stuff I know about this. Um, it's completely free, literally free, free, free. Like there's not even like a link like, oh, and if you want this, there's nothing. Right. There's, so there's, no I, there's literally, I can't take your money even if you hand a credit card to my face. So yeah. I just need five, 10 minutes of your time on a Zoom. If you can give me that, your time is worth the most. Um, that would help me a ton. Um, and obviously it's optional, um, but um, I'll, we'll, we'll drop a calendar link at some point, but let me jump into kind of um, sharing my screen yeah. here. I need my One screen share enabled. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I got you. One second before we do this, guys. So I know normally you guys are hopping in there asking questions. So as I mentioned, we started this early. We're accommodating Shiv. He's got a number of things going on. So we're going to do this a little bit different. So for the first 30 minutes, it's just going to be kind of Jeff, Shiv, and myself going over this. I'm going to try to ask all the questions that I think you may have. And then we're going to do rapid fire where you're just going to kind of type in to the chat. Um, and, and Jeff, if you can assist with when these start coming in, when we get to that spot, type in the name of the city, and then we're going to kind of dive into that. We're going to look at it and we're going to, um, we're going to inspect it. And Shiv's going to give his opinion on why this may be good or why this, this may not be good. So uh, those are kind of the rules for today. Afterwards, um, Shiv's got a time crunch. So afterwards, we can all kind of like um, kind of resume the normal format of the call. And I'm, I'm happy to stick around and answer additional questions for a little bit. But that will probably put us at like the 45 minute period right there. So, Sweet. Um, all right, cool. Cool. Ship, and take it away, brother. Yeah, sweet. So I need the ability. Oh, cool. I got the ability to share my screen. Awesome. So um, I know some of you guys use different tools. The tool I I use and I love is Ahrefs um, only because they, they just have, they tend to have the best data. Um, but for me, like, I think Patrick said it best, like if you're Patrick and you're super talented and you have resources, um, you can kind of go into, and you have a lot of skill and you've done this a lot. You can kind of go into any niche, any city who cares. Um, and you know, there's, there's sites where, um, even, uh, this is a site with, um, with a, a buddy of mine, um, and you know, it's San Diego fence, right? Pretty big city. Um, but for the vast majority of people, I feel the best strategy is picking your battles. Um, in this space, there's lots of cities, thousands of cities, hundreds of niches. So my whole thing has been, you know, why, you know, in, in my personal life, I, I don't know if you guys have ever heard the quote, like you are the five friends you hang around. And so in my personal life, I've always been kind of the, the, the ant in a sea of people. So, you know, I have friends like Patrick who do more in their agency than me, or like, I always surround myself with people who bring Jeff is way more spiritually acclimated than me. Hence why I get spiritual advice from him. Like I always find people who are better than me in a certain category when it comes to business. That's in my opinion, it's the exact opposite. I don't want anyone to be remotely as good as me in business. I, if I'm going to build a Legion website, I want to be the best in a, in a, in a town full of no competition. So the way I do this is, um, you know, for starters, obviously you can go into smaller cities, but, um, we'll, we'll kind of take an example here. So I'm going to take, for example, a site that I have, this is one, a really old project of mine. Um, but I'll show it to you. It's, it's towing in Asheville, North Carolina. So maybe I'll rephrase it towing in Asheville, North Carolina. And what you'll notice is, so here I'm at the top of maps. Um, and then I'm number one down here. If you look at this website, I mean, this has to be one of the worst websites in the history of the world. Um, I don't think it gets any worse than this. Um, it's pretty abysmal, right? So um, it's it's really, really terrible. Um, I can show you the, the call stats on it, but basically it generated like 650 phone calls last month. Um, this awful website along with, you know, this map listing, the, the combination with 650 calls and I'll try to pull it up here. But that had nothing, as you could probably tell, like even just looking at the site, there's not even an image of a tow truck or anything here. Um, it's it's literally the, because I picked my battle correctly. In fact, if you look at kind of my, let's call them competitors, um, we have Yelp directory site, we have a .gov site. Um, we do have this auto repair site, but it's like going to a sub page. Um, we have a Facebook page, yellow pages, yellow pages, a directory site called True Towing that ranks for every towing company. I don't even know what the heck this is. It's like some weird site that doesn't even have in the title the word Asheville in it. And there's MapQuest. So you can tell there's really nothing here to this day. And I've had this site up here for years. And not only have I had it there for years, it literally generates. Um, when you're generating 600 something phone calls a month, I mean, you can only imagine like, it's not like there's not opportunity or it's not worth it. It's kind of worth it for anyone to, to take that space. But I intelligently, or I guess, you know, I spent the time to choose my battle and say, this is, I'm going to go into the space because it's wide open. So um, the first thing I look at in any space, so I'll show you something um, just kind of, I looked at previously. Um, this is a city called Foster City, California. So I'll kind of show you the population. It's like 33,000 people, um, so pretty small city. But 
if you look at like the average household income, it is uh, about $158,000 a year. So it's pretty, you know, pretty affluent. Um, if you look at the average, I don't know if it'll show it easily, but price of a home in Foster City, California, um, you'll see it here. It's the average house is $1.47 million. So pretty, pretty up there as a, as a city. And I went and kind of searched a bunch of different niches. So we can start with our, our obvious towing. The first thing I look at is when it comes to the maps, I want to look for basically how many times in the maps does someone say the word foster city in the, in the title, right? And if you look here on this map, there's nothing. Literally, this one here is NAC roadside service. This guy, uh, this one here says the word toes and towing, but there's no foster city in any of these. And even this third one, if you look at even the word towing, none of like only this one has the word towing even in the, the map title. So this is pretty, pretty indicative of me of if I had a map listing called Foster City Towing Service, that because the words are going to match, that I'm going to have a way easier chance of getting into this top three because the competition here doesn't they're not really optimizing any of the words for starters. Um, the second observation you'll you'll probably notice is that both of these guys here don't even have websites attached to their to their listing. So that that's kind of a good sign to me too. Um, when I go down to the organic part here, what I'm noticing is Yelp, which is a big directory site. And the reason why, in case I know you guys probably, I know most of you guys know this, but I'll, I'll just say it anyway. The reason why I like it when I see a lot of Yelp or directory sites is because if you think about it in the eyes of Google, right? I went on Google search to look for a specific, I'm looking for tow truck companies in Foster City. By Google sending me to Yelp and this long page on Yelp, what they're really kind of saying indirectly is they can't really find an exact towing company to show me in Foster City. So you know what they're going to do? They're going to just take me to a search result page, right? What is Yelp? It's just another results page of a bunch of businesses. And so it's kind of an attempt. It's like, hey, you went on Google to search for a business and we're going to just serve you another search engine and more than a search engine, one of our biggest threats and competitors, Yelp, and we're going to give you a list, right? So this is like in Google's eyes, this is terrible. Like they would much rather send you to the little rinky dink small business in town, um, right? That is not a threat. So to me, this is always a good sign when you see lots of Yelp, um, this screw towing here, what you're gonna notice with this toolbar is kind of this toolbar tells you a couple things. So it tells you on kind of two sides. So page means the actual page itself. So th these metrics here are talking about um, kind of the number of backlinks that are going directly to m.yelp.com slash search question mark, this whole thing, right? And then domain, this, these metrics on this toolbar from Ahrefs is telling you kind of the stats of the entire website. So obviously Yelp is a massive company. So you're going to see 198 million backlinks. You're going to see, you know, um, you know, it ranks for 46, point, uh, uh, 46 million, right? Or 47 million, 46.9 million keywords. So you're, this is obviously a directory site. So these things are weak to me. We keep going. The same thing here, you can look at the backlinks, you can look at the keywords, it's kind of ranks for everything, but we'll open it up. Um, but it does have relevancy, right? Because it does have the word towing in the domain name. So there is some relevancy, but it's still weak because it's ranking for everything. The only real competitor we have here is, is this one here, number four, um, which is Redline Towing, Redline Tow San Mateo. Um, the thing about San Mateo is it's the city next door. So it's not Foster City, it's, it's nearby, um, but two, we noticed that, so there's no Foster City anywhere to be found in, in, in the title, in the domain here. And even so, Ahrefs tells you that there's 26 backlinks, right? But DR, the best way to think about DR is it's like the quality of said backlinks. Um, so DR1 means these are pretty, pretty terrible. So this is not even that difficult, even if we looked at this as a threat because it's a dedicated website, um, it's still pretty weak right? It's, it's DR1. It's 20, basically it's equivalent of like a website having 26 like pornography websites linked into it. It's not, not that, that big of a threat um, versus, you know, all of us, if we got links from internally in the zoom right now from you guys got a link from an actual towing site, that would automatically be put the site higher than a DR1. So I look at this and go, this is wide open. And I look at here, even number eight, Redwood City Tow. I kind of see, look, it's DR0. Redwood City is obviously not the right city. It's not Foster City. Um, and, you know, DR0, same thing. It, even the, and these backlinks, 
don't matter because zero is zero. The quality is non-existent. This is actually really funny. This is actually what I, this is the site that I'm, I'm helping someone, um, one of my buddies who he's trying to get out of his job. I actually am helping him build this. So he just built this lawyer like three days ago. And it shows you in three days, <laughs> it's already ranked on the bottom of page one, fostercitytoe.com, which shows you the point. And you can tell it's a Weebly site that's really horrendous. Um, but it just shows you the point that literally in like less than a week, they got on page one because it's so wide open. So um, I'll show you another example of someone who I'm helping where um, literally Fountain Valley pool deck and it's ranked number four. The site is less than, literally less than a week old. And it's already ranked on page one as the fourth for Fountain Valley pool deck. Cause once again, and their map listing is right here <laughs> showing in the sidebar um, in less than one week because we made sure it was wide open. It was really easy to get into this and, and rank for it. Um, so I guess, you know, maybe the easiest way to go about this is if in the chat bar, um, I don't know if there's questions or, you know, Patrick or Jeff, if you guys wanna want me to dive into something um, in specific, but I'd love to either answer some questions or, you know, even heck, you know, if someone wants to name some niches and cities and me just do this live, I'm, I'm more than happy to do that as well. Yeah, you guys feel free to drop in the chat. I yeah, let, let is this making sense? On a couple of questions yeah. first. Yeah, yeah, cool. And then, and then we'll kind of so you guys can fill up the chat and and with the whatever city and niche that you guys would like to see. So just to kind of reiterate what you're doing here is like the first thing you're doing is you're kind of searching and you're looking through the GMB area to look for the keywords and the cities, yep. right? And then you're evaluating the strength of the backlinks as yep. so. And, you know, obviously it's um, when we see somebody that is ranked within um, the map area. So like, obviously, like for those of you guys who don't know, I think most of you guys probably know, but if we have other other um, new listeners on here, um, the map area is probably the most important area to rank for a local business, right? Because of the the, the map and, the, and the, the reviews, it attracts a lot of attention. So we spend a lot of attention trying to focus on that area, right? So when you see that there are map listings that don't have a website and we know that the, the strength of the website will contribute to your ranking within the map listing, then kind of the implication is that the whole market is weak because these people are able to achieve a ranking within the map without that kind of big piece, right? They were able to do it exactly. without it, right? Okay, exactly. cool. So, yep. all right. Um, what are, are there other things that you're considering? I, I know this is kind of like, this is the first stop or, or is this like, where we, do we dive into it deeper? Or, Here's a, uh, yeah. Will's asking about Rockford, Illinois towing. So I don't know if that's a good launching yeah, off. But let's look at that. So, so, okay. you know, we can go, we'll go towing Rockford. So first thing I want to do is I just want to look at the population here. Um, so okay, it's 150,000 people. So let's go towing in Rockford, Illinois. Oh, whoops, I really screwed that up. There we go. And wow, I'm really typing great today. So towing Rockford, Illinois, right? So the first thing we're looking at is, so I guess good news is none of these titles here have the word Rockford in them, right? It's different, A to Z, you, know, you have A to Z towing, VL towing service. Haas towing service. What I like to do is there's kind of a couple things I do, and I'm actually happy. This is an example that got put up. Um, one thing I like to do is I also tend to observe that a lot of times if you rank your organic website and your organic site tends to be at the top, if it's connected to a map listing, I tend to notice that the map listing tends to follow. I don't know if that's just my placebo or whatever. I don't know, Patrick, if you ever observed that, but I've tend to just in doing this so many times, I tend to observe that usually if an organic website's ranked kind of at the top of, of this section, that usually their map listing kind of tends to be up here as well. There's, there's, have, there seems to absolutely be a correlation between those yeah. two. And you know what what I teach and what we do within our agency is to push the organic site as much as possible and push this. So like we're trying to build up our GMB as much as possible, but we're, we're never just focusing on one because I've noticed the same thing. They seem like they go hand in hand and I'm going to take every edge I can related to trying to get the ranking, like from an ethical standpoint, obviously, but I'm going to take every advantage I can when I see something like that. Yep. 
Exactly. And so, so what I want to do is I, I actually like to pull up on the maps. I like to pull up the three websites. So, cause in this case, all three of these do have websites. So I like to pull them up and I like to just look at the site. So this is tosstowing.com. And I want to look on page one and see, does that site rank anywhere on page one? And it does not. Um, we're going to look at the second one, A to Z towing. It's A to Z towing.biz. Um, and we'll look at, does that rank on page one? It actually is. It's the number one result, right? A to, A to Z towing.biz. And so what, so you can kind of tell, okay, so this map listing is a little bit stronger. I would even put this map listing as a little bit weaker because you're not seeing any strength in the site, but this site is ranking up here. It's up here. So I guess this is a little bit of something I'd keep an eye on. And then we go to the third one here. We look at VL auto and tires. And I let's kind of look at page one here. I don't see VL on page one. I bet you maybe it's on page two. You can look. Yeah, there it is. It's somewhere on page two. But same thing. This is DR0. All three of these sites. This one here is DR4 with 22 backlinks. This site here is DR2. It says 1.1 thousand backlinks, by the way. And I know that this is really small. I hope you guys can see it. Um, but if you ever see this where you have a website with like 1.1 thousand backlinks, um, but only a DR2, well, that's basically telling, th these are garbage, right? This is, so you could outrank this with a lot, lot less. In fact, referring domain says, how many unique domains are these backlinks coming from? And that is only 75. So don't ever be tripped up by this number ever. In fact, I usually look at RD, not backlink, um, but um, this is pretty weak too. So we'd go back here and say, okay. So the only thing, I don't know, Oh, we're on page two. Um, the only thing that is a threat on this map is maybe this, um, but these two aren't really that intimidating to me. Um, and then we go down to the organic and say, okay, well, this site here, there's a couple things not going for it. One, there's no city relevance in the domain. So if you owned, you know, rockfordtowing.com or, you know, towingrockford.com or whatever, like that would give you a boost. Um, the site title does have Rockford in it. Um, so you do have kind of that advantage. But let's kind of keep going down. So this is a directory site. Um, this is, once again, here's another dedicated site. So this site is same thing. It's pretty low quality, DR0, only 63 backlinks, 11 real backlinks um, or kind of different domains. But, you know, this does have, unfortunately, this does have the word Rockford in it. Um, you know, action towing Rockford. So already like, it's not that you can't outrank this or something. You totally could, but you, this is a dedicated site. If you go down here, this site, Speedy G Towing, it looks like this ranks for probably a different city, but Rockford's like a sub page. So let's take a look. Um, I don't know if, where, if they have a location page somewhere. Yeah, oh, look at this. They're just trying to rank for every city. So this is still easy to outrank because they're trying to rank for everything. Um, this is a dedicated site here. So I, I just wouldn't, like the way I would go, like this would be something that Patrick, you and I could look at it and go, yeah, we could outrank it because we can get better links, better whatever, you know, make the site load faster. But to me, it, the way I go, it's still more competition than I like. So right. it's the way my brain like, works. Right. Why? You like could, to me, you could, yeah. um, you, you could go in and kind of like um, pick on the, the seventh or eighth grader, or you can go and find a first grader to pick on. Right. So like, yep. you, you know, this is where the process comes in and knowing when you first do this, you know, everything we look at Shiv is like, it's all, it's all relative to what we've seen in the past. So we've kind of got this scale of like, this is easier or tougher and, and we know where that is. So it's important when you're getting started to try to understand what that scale is. And to, when you start seeing things, it's not like a red flag to the point where you can't beat them, but it's like, like, I, I would just rather, I would rather have it easier. Right. I yeah, rather, exactly. Like, like, time. for example, let, let's go into just to give an, to give an example. Well, what if you tried a different niche? Like, I don't know if there's swimming pools, like if that's like a normal thing in Rockford, but you know, like pool deck repair. Well, for starters, that's a little weird. It doesn't even show a map, which is kind of crazy. Um, let's see so, cool so what does that stuff. usually mean to you, Shiv? My, my thought process is when I see that is that there's not really a lot of people searching for it in that area. I, I'm kind of on the same, and usually I like a map. Like I, I usually like you, at least the bare minimum. I like it where at least even one listing shows on the sidebar or something, but mm -hmm. This is a little weird for me. So yeah, if it shows nothing, but you never know, right? Like for me, I feel if it's really easy, 
like in this kind of is starting to indicate it. Sometimes you go, why not just build a two, three page site by a domain? Right. Why not just put a site up and just see? Cause like, if you rank right. up here, like I've, I've at this point, just as a, as an exercise and like, like I said, I'm helping even like personal friends out, get into this. Um, I have a lawyer friend of mine who got laid off and he's, like I said, I'm, I can show you guys examples of sites that have ranked literally on page one in one week. So that's kind of where I'd say maybe this is one of those flyer things. You just do it. And right. you know what, worst case, who cares? You're out three pages worth of work on your website. You build a three page site. Um, if you saw on the Foster City Toe, just to show you, like, I don't go and build, like, this This is it. Like, it's literally three nonsensical pages. Um, so do you pay attention to the content of the sites that you're considering as, like, when, when you're diving into this, do you, do you look at their content as a factor to be concerned with? Um, yes and no. Like, if their site's literally nothing, then sure. But I, I just you know, I just look at it from the viewpoint of like, look, I don't, I don't personally believe that if a site's ranked number one as a dedicated site, a site that is actually, you know, you know, something, whatever, Tim's pool deck.com or something. Um, I don't view that as, Oh, if I just write 500 more words, that's going to be enough for Google to outrank right. me. At least I don't see it that way. I just see it as, you know, there has to be, I have to see a lot more to the picture. I have to see their backlinking being terrible. I need to see that there's no relevancy in their site title with the city in it. Like if their site title doesn't even have the city in it or, um, or like their, especially their domain doesn't have the city in it. I want to see, I want to see a few things. There's never one thing that makes you go, Oh, I'm going into the space. It's a lot of, it's a combination of things. It's, it's like a, a series of points that starts to stack up. Right. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. And the cool thing is, is like, you know, I think sometimes we live in that scarcity there's so many cities, so many niches. Like it's, it's sometimes it's so easy to be fixated and go like, damn, I can't find something. And it's like, trust me, you can, you know, just to give you a context, I lived in Foster city from the age of 12 to 14. So, you know, I did sixth, seventh, eighth grade in Foster city. And I know this town, this is by the way, to give you context, like if I go to Foster city and put directions to Google's headquarters, literally their main headquarters, it's only a 24 minute drive with traffic. This is Google's headquarters and Foster City was wide open for a bunch of stuff. This is like all the smartest engineers in the world live in Foster City and it's all like science driven. Like everyone who lives there is like some kind of engineer or, or doctor or something, mainly because everyone there is Asian like me. So, um, you know, and there was still towing. I could, I would have never believed in a million years until someone else, uh, my, my friend was the one who, who actually searched it and goes, dude, this looks wide open when I taught him this. So, um, yeah, it, you'd be shocked at how many opportunities there are that you, I couldn't believe it. Like I've never searched right. for Foster City myself and I live there. Literally, I live there. Right. So, so you so, would expect yeah. this to be like ultra competitive with the like right. kind of the demographic of all these like smart techie people in this area, like someone yep. would have thought to do this. So if that's the case, what does it look like as we move across the country and we start looking at Cedar Rapids, Iowa, or like some some other city that doesn't have any of that backbone right yeah well i mean um is the, is the question for you is like how do you even know what city to go into or sorry if i missed the, the question there me i wasn't asking a question i, I was oh. just saying like yeah, yeah. i was saying that like if this is how like if you can find these kind of gems in this area that would yep. be way more competitive when you consider not only all the cities in the in the in the united states which you know for those of you outside the united states I've heard that this is a much better market for this business model. So you, there's no reason why you couldn't do a city within the United States, but you can, you can start to, to let's just keep it to the United States for now. There's like, this is a super techie area with a lot of money and a lot of really smart people. And Shiv was able to find one that is easy to rank in. Now, when you add in the rest of the country, what does that look like? I mean, there's just, there's all right. kinds of little cities and, and this is just for telling too. Shiv, yeah. with, 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 um, when you're selecting your niches, one yep. of the things that I, that I'm big on and I teach and I started, my first site was in towing and I still have that client, which is good, but I've noticed a, a really strict correlation between the ticket value that my niches are in and like how many, how much money, I can, how much money I can get for the site. Okay. So, so like, I, I know that for my towing site, we get thousands of phone calls and that's more calls than all our other sites. And it's certainly, it's probably the site of mine in my portfolio that gets the least amount of money per month. 
right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're absolutely right. So to me, it's the combination of a couple of things, right? So what I like about towing, and in fact, I'll hopefully, I mean, I still have my Twilio open somewhere. So between all my websites in the last 30 days, I did 19,000 phone calls. Um, to show you the example of that actual towing site, just to show you that, that unique, just that individual example. Um, this site here literally generates, did, did se okay, 706 phone calls in the last 30 days. So yeah, you're exactly right. And this, uh, this pays me like, you know, $300 a week. So um, right. when, you, when you generate that many calls, you would hope it's a lot more. In fact, I have a, um, it's funny, it's, it's the one number I have in, in um, call rail. Um, but I, I actually have a taxi website that generates, um, that generates like a hundred to 300 phone calls a day, hundred to 300, 300 a day. And I don't have a client on it. <laughs> so, um, right. yeah, so I know what you mean, but it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a balance for me because I do like having volume. Um, but I also have sites like, um, this is a good example of a site, like here's block wall in Tucson where, you know, it's, it's a little bit higher ticket. Um, it generated a lot less calls like this generated, um, you know, five, two, zero, this generated, you know, 150 calls last three days. This paid me also 300 bucks a week for a fraction of the calls, but it's block wall. And I'm still, I probably could still charge more for right, it. Right. Right. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of a balancing act. Like to me, I sometimes like the volume because I feel the volume is what makes it impressive to a business owner. Like it, I feel like sometimes what's hard in niches and you have more experience in this than, than I do. A lot of my sites generate a decent quantity of calls, but um, for you, Patrick, do you ever have sites where let's say you're only generating 10 leads, 20 leads, well, let's say it's like new home construction or something that's really high ticket. Do you sometimes feel because it's so little, sometimes that makes it difficult to close? Like, I just don't know, honestly, I'm asking. I, like, I think, um, I think possibly when I was maybe like younger in the game than it would be. But now I think I get on the call with the business owner and I'm kind of like saying, I'm, I'm, I'm just more declaring like, Hey, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I think it to be worth. And then if you don't like it, then that's cool. But it, it's not, it's, whereas before I was kind of like trying to be like so, such a salesman. And I've found that when I come in with a certainty of like, Hey, we've done this all over the country. This is what I'm, I'm looking for $2,500 for this. Um, you know, let me know if that's something you're interested in where it's just take it or leave it kind of attitude. Right. Um, I think that has a lot more power than like the volume. And, and it's also hard for us to speak when we're, it's probably been a year and a half since we've gone after something where everything has just come to us as a referral where someone says, Hey, so-and-so said that, you know, you give them all their business and they're running a million dollar business. Like, what do I have to say to that person to not close them? It, like, and right. oh, we totally. don't always close them because they may not like, they might start ghosting us or like, they might have their own personal issues going on. But um, I have gotten, I guess, more in tune with it. And then one of the things I've noticed, Shib, is, is that as you move into like this block wall company versus like a towing company, a lot of times they're going to have if they've made an investment into their business right. to be able to run that type of business, like they, they're going to be a lot more serious business owner than, than maybe like the towing guy who just bought a truck and got the insurance. Right. So totally. No, so, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where I know towing is in general, I agree with you. It's, it's not the best example. I mean, here's another example of one of my sites, um, you know, which is blurry palm tree removal. And it's like very specific, um, so I, I've kind of been across the board on niches. Um, weirdly though, for me, I have personally not had an issue with towing. Like I, now granted, like for example, I, I rank for Pittsburgh towing. I'm ranked here in the maps, here in the maps, and I'm ranked number four, number six, and number seven. So you've built multiple sites out or you have multiple mm -hmm. GMBs on the same site? Yeah, multiple sites, multiple GMBs, but they all go to the same client. Yeah, that's, that's a strategy I love. Let's do some more niches. Yeah. Let's have some more people and then... I know there's some like, questions here too. Um, I don't know if you want me to answer these really quick. Yeah, go, yeah, go for it. Okay. So um, the first question is, what about the fact we hear GMBs are really hard to get in the towing niche? Um, man, and I, and I, if Patrick lets me, I'd love to come on live again and talk about GMBs. Cause I have a, for me, the way I do GMBs, I feel that 
especially if you can get someone or find someone um, in the area who is willing to zoom with you and you can take over their computer and do it on their account and then add yourself as like a manager to a GMB. Um, I found I've, I have to this day never got like, and now once again, I'm, I could have just got lucky. I've personally never been suspended on a GMB, but I am pretty, I guess I err on the side of like, I'm really cautious on how I get them. Um, so that's, you know, it's probably too long for me to explain. And everyone has a GMB process. I'm sure, I, honestly, I haven't even talked to Patrick on, on what you do. Um, but, you know, to me, I'm, I'm very particular on like trying to get that GMB from someone in the town, which is kind of right. So you're, you're like um, kind of using like a clean local IP yep. house address that lines up with the IP. And it's just kind of maybe creates higher levels of trust because of the way you set yep. it up. Yeah, exactly. So I've personally, yeah. you know, found that to work well because I, in my head, I think it doesn't make sense. You know, for example, I'm in Irvine, California. Does Google Google looks at my account and goes, okay, he's he's been in Irvine for X amount of of time. It kind of makes a little bit more sense if I opened a business in Irvine. That kind of makes more sense if I, I'm just trying to put my head in the mind of Google. If they know I've been in Irvine all the time, it seems a little bit weird if the guy sitting in Irvine, California, is like creating businesses all over the world. Like so, right. I like to try to I like to try to find a localized way to get the GMB, and then I have them add me as a user. Since as you guys know, in your GMBs, um, you know you can basically um, add users. I don't know if people are aware about this. Um, but I'll kind of go into my GMB and, and show it. Um, so give me a second here. You guys have some more niches for like, um, obviously the, the GMB conversation can go on for yeah. days, right? Yep. Um, I just want to about uh, order, you know, Bergman, Bergen County Home Care. Somebody else was asking interior design, Hampton, Virginia. Any of those, um, let's, let's rattle off yeah. one at a time. So yeah, so the let's one there was, Yeah, let me let me really County quick. Um, yeah, so Adam, by the way, I don't understand Adam your question. It says, could it be a correlation due to the effort, energy a savvy owner business puts into making each of them rank? I don't remember the context of that. So if you well, want to repeat your question, GMB versus the website, like what's the correlation between the website ranking high and the GMB? It, it's just a factor. If your website's connected to a GMB and your website ranks on the top of the organic there, it helps your GMB rank. It's not the only factor, but it just helps your GMB get pushed up. Um, and so- You, got, you guys gotta remember yeah. this, like Shiv has gone back to several times. Think about this in the eyes of Google, right? So you're saying that this property is connected to this property and we're gonna consider the trust of this. If you're going in for a job and you have like a really good interview and everything, they're also gonna look at your resume. They're also going to maybe look at the references on your resume and your education, right? So the, Google's doing the same thing when they're trying to determine the rank in your GMB is they're going to look at everything as a whole. And when you start connecting these things and this one, hey, I've got, like Ship said, if I've got, this is my website and I've got a link from Microsoft and like Forbes and, um, you know, all these, all these like super strong sites that Google trusts and that's attached to this, then there's more trust transferred there. So I think that is how I look at the correlation for these things. So pushing one or the other, you've got an opportunity that we know Google is considering. So go after that, like maximize that opportunity. Yep, exactly. And so it's one of those things where um, now the next thing, which is, is uh, Bergen County Home Care. Um, Randy kind of wants to know, you know, if this is something that you would go into. For, for starters, um, this county, I'm guessing has a Bergen bunch County's of- Bergen County in New Jersey. Right. Is, is, but it is a county, right? It's not just a city named Bergen County. I'm guessing there's a bunch of cities that fall inside of it, right? Is that how that works? Yes? No? Okay, cool. So I would look at, I, I, yeah, I, to me, look, you know, for starters, I mean, I don't see off, I'm just going to try to do this quick just for the essence of time here because I'm kind of running close to the wire. I have like 11 more minutes. But um it, it it looks like no one has the word Bergen like Bergen County in the name. Now the only problem I would say is, and to be honest, like a part of me feels like it'd almost be better to just literally build a two three page site for every city in the county. Um, as crazy as that sounds, like that's kind of more where my style is to go city by city, um, and just get that like perfect matching of a city. Um, and then if you want, you can build a county site as well. Um, but I just love, I just love going and dominating the city. That's just how I roll. Now, you know, I know that county sites rank and work, 
But I, if I just had to guess, if someone, the way Google works is if you're typing in home care and you're in a different city in the county, it's going to tend to put the map listings of those nearby. And I don't know, Patrick, if you kind of have the same kind of, kind of idea. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of, um, you know, depending on the population of the city or the wealth of the city and the niche that I'm going after, I'll consider those. And then if you know, I kind of have this like 70 K cutoff spot, and if there's like 70,000 people in it, then a lot of times for me, that's kind of a, not a hard rule, but it's kind of like a, a guideline for whether I'm going to build a new site in that city. Sometimes when I know that we're going to like want to go after a bunch of cities, then I'll, I'll do like home care in New Jersey. And then I'll, I'll build almost like pages that almost like a new homepage that talks about the city. And then I'll have a GMB with that city name that links to that homepage within yep. my site. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, I do, there's a couple of things I definitely like. I like the fact that, um, I mean, on the maps, the problem is, is that every one of these, if you see it, this has home care and Bergen County in the name. So I, I would, it's in Glen Rock, which is probably one of the cities inside of Bergen County. So just, just look at the cities itself. And yeah, like Patrick said, I would, I would list all the cities in Bergen County. And by the way, you guys have those free Google searches, right? So Bergen County, and I probably spelled it right, uh, wrong, but uh, list of cities. You can always do this, get a list right? Here you go. And, and you can just kind of go in order from look at the populations and kind of pick your battles of what you're going to, what's kind of the best, best one to go into. But that's how, how I do it. Um, and then let's see here. Um, so one of Google's core updates is penalizing sites for um, kind of BS backlinks should be finished rolling out in a week or two. Cool. Yeah. I mean, in my opinion, I think I, it's funny because um, on top of kind of the little issue I'm dealing with, someone decided to negative uh, SEO me and send 20,000 nonsensical porn backlinks to my website. Um, and um, it didn't do it. In fact, it helped. Um, I, Google usually is pretty smart. Um, they know kind of all these tricks. You have to think about it going back to what does Google want to do? They want to provide the get best experience for the consumer. That means the person searching for the tow truck site, the person searching for the tree care site, like Google's not going to go and say, oh, this guy has a bunch of like, it's just backlinks and content. I, I know it's the basis of what we do, but always think about the user experience too. And I think that's the thing that like sometimes gets lost in translation here. It's like, if you just build a site, but it's terrible and it has 800 pop-ups. And when people click on it on search, they go back to the search page because they hate it. Google is going to know that data and go, man, every time someone clicks on this listing, they go back because they hate the experience. And that's going to cost you way more than any, any other factor, in my opinion. So um, just be, be cautious of that stuff. Um, but let's see. So um, interior design Hampton, Virginia. So let's go look at that interior design. So first let's look at the population here. Uh, okay, 135,000 people. So let's go and type in interior design. So I guess for start, the only thing that's a little strange I will say about this niche is that a lot of times people go to like a showroom. So it is that's the only little weird thing about it um, is that, you know, usually people like to go to an actual address, but let's kind of take that out of consideration. None of these in the name have the word Hampton in it. So maybe if you did it, Hampton interior design studio or something as a name, um, maybe, you know, interior decor plus design or something Hampton. Um, that's kind of something that, that can give you rel relevancy. Um, yeah, I'm trying to look here on the list. Yeah, none of these seem to have done that. So that's kind of good. And if we look down, it is directory site, directory site, um, my guess is this is a directory site. It has 69,000 backlinks, but we could take a look. Um, let's look at the location here. Um, it's so weird. I don't, do they even say where their location is? Virginia Beach, Virginia. So I don't know where that is. It's probably, um, I don't know if, like how far away that is from Hampton, but it, it doesn't look like, that's not in their main site title. So that's good. I still feel that that's, yeah, Virginia Beach. It's weird that I they bet. have that kind of subdomain on there, right? If you go back to that search. Yeah, it it's super dot, And it, it said that they had a, I think I saw 56 DR. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't know what's going on with that site. It seems like it has an unusual amount of yep. potential fact, strength. And, and, or, and, look, and look at that, interior decorator Virginia Beach, right? Of course, this is what they're really ranking for. 
Um, <laughs> so, so this is still outrankable. In fact, yeah, I, I don't view that as a threat. And of course, I don't know if you ever do this, Patrick. I lose my tabs all the time, which is super great. There it is. You know that um, that that right arrow in the very yeah. top is like a drop down. In oh my in god, search. I have never. That's crazy. I've never known about that. That's great. Yeah, that thing's so handy. That's funny. I don't know um, why it took twenty years for them to put that in, but. <laughs> The more you know. Yeah, I've never, never known about it. That's amazing. Um, Thumbtacks uh, is a directory site. Um, I'm guessing, I don't know what this is, but I bet you it's the wrong area. Um, let's see here. Yeah, Virginia Beach. So that is, I still find that easier to outrank. Yeah, this looks, this looks great to, to me. Like I don't see even the ones here that are, this is like right to the homepage. This is a DR6. Um, this one here is Hampton. This it's funny because this is a good example, guys, of like why did, is this site, which is Hampton Designers with a good DR, what went wrong where this is now number nine, right? Like sometimes when I look at stuff, it's like, okay, the DRs look good. It has you know 24 referring domain, but high DR. It has Hampton, Virginia interior design and it has Hampton in the domain. Like what happened? And let's take a look and let's see. Um so my my bet already this thing is cut off so i bet i really do wonder like people it has, are probably like, bouncing when they come here that's what i'm trying to say i bet you especially in mobile if you were to yeah look at this this is how it looks on a phone like that's this is terrible so there you go like this this guy this this person literally could have dominated and they didn't think through their user experience and people are bouncing off the site. There's an opportunity for you guys right there to call yeah. these people up and, and fix their problem. Exactly. And look at this. There's no contrast too. They the site is like white on white on white. <laughs> so right. Right. It, and the font is tiny. Like so, this, yeah. so so these are these these are the things you have to you have like less than a second to kind of grab people's attention when they come to the site. And when they come here and there's like it looks wonky, then they they make assumptions, right? So you want this site to load quickly and, and, and give the right information, give, make it very easy on the user. Yep, exactly. So you get my approval, um, for interior design Hampton, I'd go for it. So that's my, my takeaway. Um, cool. And then let's see hey, here. A question yep. about longer sales cycles. Like I, I mentioned, I think Lou asked, you know, Patrick and I do a lot of longer sales cycles, but it sounds like you do a lot of shorter sales cycle stuff. Like how do you approach that? Yeah. So when it comes to sales stuff, like, you know, for me, I, in fact, I'm going to put I'll, I'll show you a site that I recently closed. Um, so here's, here's a site Des Moines auto glass. Um, and what I did is I just did the process where I looked for auto glass, Des Moines, Iowa in search. Um, and then I went to the maps and what I did is I went and hit view all and kind of scrolled to the bottom and looked for, um, kind of different different businesses and basically what i ended up doing is i'm a little bit more gutsy in the sense of i'm willing to just call up some businesses so i did call up like these five in a row um because i don't want to hit the top that probably already get a lot of calls i want to kind of hit up these people um and i basically ended up kind of getting this guy to agree to to run a trial and then the one thing i uh do that i feel like most people don't do and i don't know if it's out of like i don't know if it's out of laziness or just because it's time consuming or whatever but i actually listen when i give a free trial i listen into the calls like i actually listen to every call that comes in myself i don't outsource it um i actually myself literally like want to know what the heck is the business owner getting on their free trial and i'll show you um this is actually the email i sent him and i said hey i attached the calls to this email and you can see this was already like a few weeks ago attach the calls to this email from July 8th onwards, here's what I got you. And I literally listed every car, every auto glass, if there's price in the phone call and a list of all 21 calls. So you can imagine after I did this, it only took literally like him to go through it. The next day he calls me and it, he agreed on $150 a week. Um, and so that's kind of how I do it in terms of sales cycles is I just kind of listen in. I, I try to break it down, um, but I stay on top of them. Like I'm, I'm literally talking to them. In fact, you can see the email before. This is the literally the, the very next day. So I'm really, really like on the business owner, like almost every day, if there's calls coming in, I'm following up with them on what happened on phone, email, or text. So that's how I do it. This is awesome. awesome. We, we yeah. do a little bit of this too, when we kind of go to close someone, but 
um, you're, you, you guys can kind of think about this as, as like a, almost like the prosecutor who's building a case right. where it's like, here's the evidence that we have that we're, we're of value to you and just like present it to them and, and make it really easy. And because these business owners, just, they're disorganized and they don't like humans by nature are really bad about kind of counting things in their head. And if you rely on that to be the, what's deciding whether they pay you or not, then you're leaving money on the table, especially if you're producing a lot, because it's easy for them to underestimate it. Yep, exactly. Exactly. So somebody asked, real, kind of, somebody asked about how to get around the showroom issue. So we have a countertop site in a location that is doing pretty well. It took me a bit to find a client, but I, I found, um, well, where'd he go? Oh, he, I, I, I'm still here. Yeah. Um, who, who goes through uh, Home Depot actually, and they do countertops and they get their leads from Home Depot. So I contacted them and of course they're open to lead generators, right? So it was like a no brainer for them. So I yeah. have them on file. So there, there are ways to get around it. It's not always the simplest thing. I went through a few other trial clients that didn't work out for that reason. I tried to go direct to contractors because they could turn in a countertop, turn a countertop into a remodel or get other work that was associated. And they just, they couldn't pull through with it because they're too small time or whatever. So I found this operation that I think is going to work out. So there's ways around it. Yeah, yeah. I, I same thing. If it, you know, I, I I would love to do. I would love to talk about sales, um, closing clients. In fact, I have recordings of me closing um, lead gen um, clients. So I'm more than happy to play those. Um, yeah, I like learned that. those calls. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shiv. I know that. I know that you're on a timetable, and I know that you love this stuff. And I want to just make sure that. Um, that we're kind of like respecting your time with this so that you can not be late for your other yep. scheduled events. We can bring Shiv back on here to dive into some of these other topics and I can go through, I know that we have a list of questions on here and I'm pretty confident that I can um, answer these questions, you know, in agreement with how Shiv would. Um, but Shiv, you're welcome, obviously welcome to stick around, but I just want to make sure we respect your time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Into yeah, for sure. I got like, I'll, I'll, I got like another five max 10 minutes. So I'll stay on for a little bit longer. Um, okay. It's right funny. On. I already, I already let my next commitment know I'm running late, which is amazing because I, I like okay, you guys. Cool. I, so yeah. Um, what I want to do too, just really quick, just so people do it. Um, if, if they got any value out of this, I put a link in the zoom chat um, to my direct Calendly. It's with me. Um, it generates a zoom link. So whenever time you schedule um, it, you know, just make sure you hop on the zoom link. Um, but if you guys could do that, hop on a zoom with me, I'll give you, like I said, a proper video on all of this, um, along with a worksheet I use that I kind of check off like the results on page one or page two of Google. And it kind of gives me a good idea of my brain to go into a niche or, or, or city. Um, that would just help a lot. Like I said, you know, ideally I'm trying to look for like 20 people to help me out. Um, so if you guys have, you know, 10 minutes and obviously have some sort of value you got from me, um, that would mean the world. Um, just I'll to use that Calendly link and book something. So, I'll drop it in Facebook. Also, shit. That's awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, I guess I'll do like last last minute. Um, if there's any last minute questions or anything like that, um, you know, I'm more more than happy to answer them. Or if Patrick, if there's anything you want me to sign off at the last couple minutes here. Yeah. So I'm just curious as to like. You, you kind of, it kind of looks like by what you presented, you got your kind of main points where we're looking for like the city and the, the niche name within the, the GMB and the site and the domain name. And then we're kind of looking at the backlink strength. Do you consider the reviews as a part of this equation too? And uh, yeah, so I do, I do look at reviews. Um, I, I do um, if within reason, but the hard part with looking at the reviews though, is it doesn't really like, I, I think for me, if you go into areas that have very little to no reviews, well, the problem is, is that that probably also indicates, is there no business happening? Mm -hmm. Right. So you're always, to me, I try to just live my life, not caring too much about that stuff. Cause I feel like I can always slowly over time, as I get calls coming in from organic site calls coming in from maps, like, I feel like you can always just put an emphasis with your client to direct them to right. your maps page and get reviews. Um, in fact, one of the things, and I would love to do this on another, another one of these calls. Um, I actually have a little, um, 
a little way, a little zap that from my phone system, where if the call is over X amount of minutes, I actually send a text message to the customer that says, Hey, I hope you got value out of, you know, Des Moines auto glass. If you could, if you've had a positive experience, please give us a five-star review on Google. It helps us a ton. We're a small business. If not, if there's any uh, complaints, we want to make it right. Email us here. And so right. that so you our, can automate. Our, our software is going to really be, be doing that. Um, That's so very, sick. very soon. Yeah. As we have the text I, messaging, we have our campaign builder. And um, so, yeah. You better you better show it to me first before everyone else. I better get the sneak peek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll give you the sneak uh, peek. Cool. And poor Patrick in his mobile home with broken internet. Oh man, that is rough. It's, only, it's not like you run an internet business, Patrick. So... Either way, I guess, uh, guys, you've been awesome. Like I said, if, if you're able to, um, I don't want to bug you guys any further. If you're able to um, hop on a Calendly appointment with me, literally, like I, I swear on my life, you there's not, even if you begged me to take your money, I have nothing to sell. I just need literally five minutes of your time. Basically, long story short, just to write a sentence or two for me. Um, and I'll, I'll show you everything to do. That'd be amazing. And I'll give you a bunch of training videos in return for free. Um, but that's all I got. So I got to go and it's good talking to y'all. So see ya. Peace. All right. So appreciate Shiv's time. Patrick has got his internet jammed up. I'm trying to, I'm on two different computers because I'm having issues with my Mac. So there's a lot of tech, tech issues. So I'm trying to transfer the Calendly link over to the um, Facebook group. So I will get that in. I'm not sure the Facebook is because Patrick got jammed up. So um, He's back. He's back. All right. Cool. We lost Mr. Shiv though, huh? So he, he bounced. Oh, Shiv bounced, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Um, what did you guys think of that? Let's let's hear some comments. If you guys, if you guys um appreciate what Shiv did here, um, obviously a very talented, experienced person. Throw it in the chat, let Shiv know that you know he doesn't need to do this, but like me, he really he loves helping people and he he wants to spend see people get successful as you as you kind of heard. He's been taking his time and just helping friends and people that he knows, right? With with uh, how they can kind of live this live, live this life and and run this business model. So, um, re really cool of him to do that. We'll definitely get him back on here. I think what I'd like to do is get him on here and have like a um, sales, some kind of like sales coaching, and then we can hear his GMB strategies and um, you know, kind of let's let's draw on the skill set so you guys we have the way that's worked for us in our agency. And, and, you know, there's, um, there's a million different ways to be successful in this business model. Right. So uh, maybe some, some of the stuff that, that we're doing doesn't click for you guys so much, but hearing it from some of these other people um, maybe it will. So, um, you know, and maybe you take, make an all-star team of like, Hey, I'm going to take this Patrick and this from Shiv and, and this from like whoever else we bring on here. Right. So um, awesome. Awesome. Do we, uh, Paul, I saw that, question about using the VPN. I would highly advise you guys not to use VPNs with your GMBs. I know that you can get a new IP address, but Google does have the ability to detect when a VPN is being used. VPNs are often, the IP address is often going to be used by uh, a bunch of different people, right? So they like the VPN service will have maybe 500 different IP addresses and people are using those when they want to go. A lot of times they're using those when they want to go download something or something like this, right? So um, there may be some like cooties, associated with that and when you're trying to do something that is based on trust like it may not be best to like let google know that hey i'm going to put this mask on while i set this gmb up and google's like we don't necessarily can't see who's underneath it but we can tell that there's a mask there right so that's kind of the the mindset where it's all about trust right so um i think that's part of it like we've um you know i I don't, I, I've never done what Shiv's done, was talking about there where he like has these people and he logs into Zoom and sets this stuff up. Um, maybe that's a great way to do it, but um, we that Shiv, we've had very few though. We've got 850 GMBs in our agency and, you know, maybe we lose, I don't know, 20 a year or something like that. So um, we try to keep things kind of by the book 
uh, you know, and, and there's probably a give and take there, right? Where if you're getting that many, then maybe you got like a higher level of acceptable risk to be able to scale faster. So um, you guys got to decide what works for you. And, you know, I think the key that you're going to see from people like Shiv and other people that, that I've brought on and people I'll bring on in the future is these people are problem solvers, right? Like, Shiv having these people jump on a Zoom is something that any of you guys could have thought of. And um, I think I've said this before, when you guys start this business, it's not just about like ranking the site. It's really the bigger thing is how do I become a problem solver? How do I solve? Like, I know where the end zone is and we're going to tell you like, hey, there's this way to get here. Maybe this doesn't, way doesn't work. You got to figure out how to run around it so we get to the end zone, right? So the people that have that I've noticed not, that have not only had success in this business, but in anything is they're problem solvers. They're just like, I'm going to get to the end zone. Like, what do I need to do to get there? I'm going to, I'm going to come up with creative ideas and like in your free time or the time that you guys spend thinking about the business, think about the problems you have in the business and then like, just stay on it, stay on that problem and just keep on picking on it. Come up. Like what I do is like a lot of times I have a problem. Like I'm, I'm dealing with this every day right now. I'm, I'm like constantly thinking about how am I going to solve this GMB API issue? Like, I'm just like, well, some of the ideas I'm coming up with, right? What if I build something that um, can go and like, I can put in like the uh, URL, the map URL of the GMB, and it's just pinging the thing every day. And I, like without the API, I could probably get the number of reviews if a new review has come in, if something's been suspended, right? Like stuff like this, if there's a new question, I could probably build something that does that. So I'm like, how can I take, Google out of the equation. The end of this is not, we lost our GMB API and then we never got, got it back. That is not how the story goes for me. My Mine is like, have this problem. Google is like being a pain just like they are with our GMB. But like, it's just, I'm just gonna keep on focusing on it until I get a solution. So if you guys take that same, if you guys kind of have that same tenacity towards getting your GMBs and whatever it is, then like, there's really only one result. It's success, right? It's like, it's just a matter of time, right? You know, if like, they're, they're, that's how it's been for me my whole life with the things that I've tried to focus on is I'm, I'm just going to stay focused on it until this point. And it, this is where I say like, there's, there's a lot more um, correlation with success than if you have this kind of delayed gratification where you're willing to just like put in this work and know as opposed to like intelligence or any of these other things. It's like, are you willing to just kind of like continuously do this until you get the result that you need and that you want? And, um, you know, we've done that in our agency and, you know, like I'm, I'm doing that right now with the CRM. I'm going to just keep on picking on this GMP thing until I get it resolved, right? And I'm spending a lot of my time on it, but I, I know that I'm gonna have a solution long-term and I know that's gonna mean a lot to you guys, right? And um, I'm like, if, like once we come up with a solution, maybe there's a better solution, right? And I'll just kind of keep picking on it. So uh, Jeff, I know that we had a number of questions because we we're kind of like bouncing through that. Um, let's, let's, let's cycle through some of those. What questions do we have remaining? Yeah, and I'd just like to say, you know, for any of you who are not as familiar with Shiv, like the opportunity to get on a phone call with him is, is a solid goal. And this guy is so knowledgeable about this business. If you have the opportunity, follow the link and get on the phone with him. And, you know, he needs a little bit of help in, in exchange for 15 minutes of, or for a little bit of your time. You know, he could give you a lot of uh, insight into maybe a question you need to answer or something like that. So I highly encourage anybody to follow that link. So that's yeah, a great person to have a relationship with, like just a uh, classic, like stand up guy. Um, you know, so I had a and, and those of you, like, go ahead, Jeff. The questions are kind of getting lost back in the chat now, but um, uh, one of them was asking about our target um population size and our target ticket item. Mm, so, for me and my agency, I don't really like building a site with less than 70,000 people. And honestly, that's usually like an add-on area. Like I, I'm not excited to build a, a site for less, if there's less than 250,000 people in there. And part of this is like, how sharp is your sword when you're going into battle? A lot of times I'm kind of coming in there and I'm, I'm not really scared, right? I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna come in here and like, I'm gonna win. 
-hmm. you need to balance that. And there's, there's, there's kind of like difficulty and also the upside potential when we start ranking, right? So you need to think about the niche as well. Like towing in a 70,000 population is going to be fine. It's going to create calls and I'm going to be able to find a client. But if I start doing like, you know, something that is really high, like tennis court installation, right? 70,000 people, what part of like that, that could be 60 to $80,000 to have that installed. What part of that demographic is going to be able to afford that? Looks a lot different if I'm doing that in Los Angeles, right? And now I've got like millions of people with a lot of wealthy people there. So I'm considering all these different things. So it's hard to come and say like hard, fast rules. You need to think about the demand of the service. Okay, all that being said, I also don't like things below a ticket value of $750. Um, and, and really what, like, honestly, that's kind of been the rule that I, that I teach to other people. But in our agency, I would say that number is probably closer to $2,000, right? Um, right? Or like at least a thousand, because I prefer to go after these niches that I'm going to be able to get like five to $10,000 a month for, as opposed to $1,200 a month. Yeah. Right. And like Lou was asking earlier about the sales cycle. And so for us, we, I guess we're just used to dealing with longer sales cycles instead of shorter. So for me, it's like that the long-term value of those clients is generally going to be more, but then when you, you know, like Patrick saying, there's all these variables, right? So if you take this conversation we've had with Shiv about due diligence, and if he can nail the due diligence on a towing site, and within a reasonable amount of time, he's getting 300 bucks a week, 1200 bucks a month. And we're busting our hump over here to try to get some other thousand dollar, you know, $2,000 uh, uh, price point niche ranked and sold. We might only get 1500 bucks a month for that, you know, and we spent six months of our time or whatever. It's like you, you, a whole bunch of right. things into it. If you nail the due diligence, I, that's the mistake I made when I got in this business. I didn't do good enough due diligence because of a bunch of different reasons. Um, I can make a bunch of excuses about it, in other words, but uh, that crushed me in the beginning. And, it, and it, it definitely led to other things like getting into sales and, and all these other things, which is amazing. I, I'm glad it worked out that way. But if I had to do it over again, I would have done my damn due diligence with that way. Patrick's locked up again. There he yeah. Is. There he is. One of the things to consider. Uh, yeah, I think I'm back. Yep. All right. Cool. So one of the things to consider with the, the uh, sales cycle, like part of the reason that Jeff and I get sucked into these longer sales cycles is the sales cycle of what the person is selling to, right? Yeah, because funny. if you're trying to close someone on something that hasn't closed uh, a lead from you, that's a different story. Like when Shiv was given the example, he was showing all the towing stuff that he had sent over. So those are closing the same day, right? But if you're doing like, let's go back to tennis court installation, the person's going to get the call and then they're going to probably have the person come out and then plans need to be sent and all this stuff has to happen. So I can't go cycle for the tennis court installation, maybe a month or two months, right? So it's, it's harder for us to say, hey, I sent you 10 leads this week. Let's do $5,000 a month, right? So we build that relationship, but... That being said, once we kind of get it locked in, you know, it will be on autopilot. And, um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of times the, like the, the business owner that is running a towing company is going to be very different than the business owner that is running a tennis court installation company. And personally, I like dealing with I, I find them to be more professional. I find to, like to kind of understand that they've got a lot of money out for different things. And, you know, them paying a few thousand dollars a month for getting like, you know, a million dollars a business. It's, there's a lot of factors here. You need to consider all this stuff. So what I'm not trying to teach you is to go into this niche or this niche. I'm trying to teach you the skills of how to evaluate this thing, get yourself in the mindset of what you should consider when you go into this and, and what matters and what we think about, right? And what Shiv's thinking about. There's, there's obviously, one of the things that I've noticed is, um, you know, we've hung out with, 
all these people that are doing big numbers. And there seems to be a lot of overlap in the way our minds work and consider with these things. And there's pieces where there's not. And every time I hear from somebody like Shiv, you get to pull a piece into what we have and kind of add it into our tool belt, right? But there's a lot of commonalities. And I think you guys, like the key is, is really understanding the mindset and not like, like all these different variables will change the whole equation, right? And if you, if you can kind of see that, then and maybe you guys can make better decisions on this stuff when you're than Shiv does. And I put a little bit more emphasis on content, right? Those are two things that I think I consider more. Um, but if you're finding, like Shiv was finding some great stuff there, right? And and I think that that he selected there and for the, for the same reasons. And it's something I'm always looking for other lead gens, right? Someone that's chosen like the perfect name, they've done other things right. It just doesn't, it doesn't happen by coincidence, right? Like you, you kind of like, start to like the sharks don't eat the sharks usually right and that's that's kind of what this is about like let's find the fish right so you know when you start to get in there and you're a shark and you start smelling around there and you're like there's somebody else here let me go to this is a big blue ocean we just have to be willing to do a little bit of work to try to find out where the other fish are right because they're out there so um uh adam we just mentioned content uh adam's asking once you pick the city in the niche like how do you get your content made so we've made some changes in that and i don't know how much you want to reveal about it patrick but um i'll let you think I, I don't want to go too deep into it um but yeah like i've got a video in the group um jeff maybe you can it's it's actually it wasn't a it wasn't a call but it was a video it was like how um the topics to write about and i think it's like an endless yeah. amount of topics it was march to about so there's it was March 4th, the bonus video on content creation. So I'll, I'll yeah. link it online as well. Yeah, throw that in there. So that's how we write about how we get it. There's a lot of different ways of hiring stuff. I mentioned last week, I know that there's a number of people that have reached out to me. I've got to get that connection. It's just been a really busy week for us. So it's coming. I will um, connect you with um, some of the content writers that we that we have. So um, it's going to be kind of a, a limited, I'm not going to just like pass them out to, to everyone. There's people that I know and trust, um, that I'm going to give them off to like kind of people that I know and trust, right. Not just like every single person. So, um, that is probably a, clo a closed loop with the amount of people that have reached out to us so far. So, um, but there's a lot of different services out there. You can post a job on indeed, you know, um, a lot, a lot of options, you know, um, you could probably hire like someone in college or like. A, a really good high school student you're not writing like you're not trying to write like a pulitzer like a, like you know some bestseller right so uh we got any other questions jeff i'm going through the... i know they're coming in and then we kind of like got buried with a lot of comments there yeah some of them are just comments so it's a little hard to get it through there Let's do some, let's, uh, before we wrap up the call, we, we didn't start off with the wins. So um, let's, let's get, some, let's get a few wins and then let's wrap up this call since we did yeah. start a half hour early. I tried to let everyone know, but it seems like uh, some Neil, you didn't know, man, my bad. Um, so let's hear some wins. Who's got some wins from the last week? What do you got, Neil? Ask to unmute. Hold on. We set it up a little bit different because, um, we wanted to make sure Shiv yeah, had the mic. And you go to the top of the of the chat participant, so okay. then I can unmute you uh, easier. So I'm unmuted, right? Yeah, you're good. Go ahead, Neil. Yeah, this is more of a um, kind of a mindset thing because you know how, and Patrick has said it, and you've said it in the past. Sometimes you go through seven clients before you get the right one, right? And um, it's it's funny because I had a talk last Friday with a guy I thought was going to be unbelievable, right? And then he's telling me why he's not selling these jobs and this and that. And he's thinking of getting back in the union. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, right? So I didn't say that, but five minutes later, I talked to this guy in Arizona who, you know, was kind of iffy, but then he's coming at me like, I sold five jobs out of stuff you sent me this week. Uh, this, the next day, he wired me $1,000. Uh, he's all excited. Give me everything you've got. And I couldn't place his accent. He's in Arizona. He's from the island of Tonga off the coast of New Zealand. I mean, this guy's a bulldog. This guy's mailbox. I mean, he's not, he, it's the same guy who wants me to get his brother going in Fort Worth. But it's just a, it just, to me, after 
dealing with the regular business with the overhead and the employees and the 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 mortgage and the, the vehicles, the equipment, this job, this business is fantastic. It's just, you got to get over the rejection from some of those customers, because then you get this other one that's just like, he makes up for everybody, you know? It's a box it's, of chocolates. It, yeah, that's, that's right. And it, it's, it seems so obvious after you've closed a few people that that's what's going on, where you just like, if this person rejects you, like, who cares, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I can't imagine what our life would look like and what our business would look like if when someone rejected me and and when I'm trying to call, if that was the end of it. And I was just like, okay, like this business model doesn't work. I can't find this, this site's dead. Like it's, it's a waste. It's just never, never been ha- how it is. And, and you well, just have to, you just kind of have to know, like, it's like you do, you do one push up and you go and look in the mirror and you be like, this doesn't work. Right. Like, well, maybe if you do a hundred a day, every day, then like you're, you're going to get the results. And that's the same thing with this. If you expect the rejection and anticipate it, then it won't be shocking and it won't be painful. It's not, it's the person isn't rejecting you. Right. That's, that's one thing to get through your mind. Like there, it doesn't mean that you're like bad sales, the best, the best sales people in the world get rejected. Right. It's just, just the nat- nature of the game. What I look for is like, where's the tenacity at? You went through seven people or whatever, like, like you, it's, it's, that's the type of person that I want that's selling. And, you know, you guys can all be that person. Just let, like, when you feel that pain or rejection, just kind of like maybe a little pep talk. They're not rejecting me. Maybe like they're, this is just not the right person. Right. And you're going to get better at it too. The reps are going to help and you're going to get rejected less, but you know, that's the way I see it. I don't even look at it. I don't even frame it as rejection. I'm looking at it at a, like I'm qualifying them and I'm trying to give them and explain to them an amazing opportunity that they have to grow their business. And they just flat out may not be the right person. In fact, they probably aren't. They can't roll as big as we do. So that's on them. That's not on us. You know, it's like if you can't even like if I'm sending them seven remodeling leads a week and they're telling me they can't close any, well, you got other issues, dude. Like I, if you were super motivated and, and they were asking me questions, I might even handhold them and try to help them close better. But if they're just like, oh, these are, you know, I just can't close them. Well then, you know, I'm out. Like I got to go find somebody else. That's not rejection for me. That's them telling me and showing me that they're not the right client. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Congrats on the win, Neil. Um, what, what else, what else do we have? What other wins do we have? We had a couple in the beginning. Somebody closed a 120k profit deal, and holy cow! You know they get 50 percent of that with uh, another business partner that's put 50 50. So that's pretty amazing. I want to get in that niche. So there's always yeah. niches. And that's one thing I was going to say about niches is, you know, we we love the niches we're in, but I know there are better niches out there. There are better niches than any of us have ever thought of, right? And so it's like always, like Patrick says, like keep your mind open keep doing being intentional and being very tenacious about what you're doing because all of a sudden that golden nugget pops out of this a whole flow and equation where you're just like wow i've hit a gold mine here and you know it's the business model has so many different th- aspects to it the more you learn the more you can run it down and you'll come across those opportunities and you can really capitalize yeah absolutely this this is what we were talking about before with like the the skill stacking too right so you guys learning this, this business model, and then like your chances of success double when you add another skill, if it's kind of related, right? So that doesn't mean that like, hey, you learn lead generation, and then you also learn ice fishing, that like some magical marriage is going to happen, but, but maybe it will, maybe there's like ice fishing lead gen that you wouldn't have known, but maybe you learn sales, right? And then you learn public speaking. So now you've got like two units and you learn public speaking. Now you have four. So this is why it's really important to keep adding on to this. So like for us, I gave this example before I learned so, to be a software engineer first and then I learned lead gen. And then like, if I didn't have either one of those skills, I would not have been able to build the software, right? So like, yeah. it's important when you start putting this stuff together. And then like, I've never taken the public speaking classes, but having some kind of like understanding of what to do has allowed me to present this in front of a large group of people like this 
that I'm going to get a good reaction from, right? And there's sales that's going into this. And then I've also studied psychology. So kind of understanding people has made me better at sales, right? So like, it's important that you keep doing this stuff and you guys, you need to have a regular regimen of how you're kind of sharpening your ax. For me, I find it to be best in the morning, uh, but you want to make sure that you keep on learning these different things, right? And, and it goes outside this group or any other groups that you guys are in is like, what do you want to learn? How are you going to achieve it? And then how is that going to be relative? Because a lot of times these, you're not going to be able to see between the lines until you have both of these in your hands, right? Like I'll tell you what, playing poker for a living for 10 years has made me a better salesperson. And I would have never thought, I had never played poker to become good at sales, but I can tell when I'm on a call just by the tone in someone's voice, kind of where they are. And then I can adjust and say, oh, okay, let me, let me phrase it this way, right? Because there's so much studying and language stuff that I studied that it, it prepared me for it in that moment. So a lot of times, th that's why I always go back to that visual of the like 10,000 steps. We don't always know how the value of this, but it is actually a step. The getting rejected is a step, right? The doing the wrong niche is a step because you start to learn these pieces and they become valuable as you move forward, right? So um, guys, I think we... Um, I think we can wrap this one up. We've been on here for an hour and a half. You know, we try to keep it at an hour. I hope you guys got a lot of value from this. Um, help out Shiv if you can, if it makes sense to you. And um, yeah, we'll we'll get him back on here. And uh, if there's any, if there's if you guys have any other questions, throw them in the group this week. And we'll probably have another guest on here in the next couple of weeks. Jeff and I have been kind of working and talking with with a few people. Uh, maybe a little bit outside the, the Legion space to bring some kind of diversified value to you guys. But as always, let's win, let's end this call. Um, let's do the things. A, over the you a quick message there, Patrick. I don't know if you want to do that on the chat. I don't have one lined up right now. I don't, I don't, um, cool. Jeff, Jeff is looking for, Jeff is looking for a, um, a giveaway opportunity. I don't, I don't really, Hmm. I, I guess just the in and out call, the in and out nature of the call. Nobody stuck out to me this this week. So, um, but that's like that's something we're going to start introducing. So, a, a little extra motivation for people. We're going to obviously consider the wins. So, over the next seven days, um, let's do the actions that are necessary to to create wins in our business. Right? Let's 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 step it up. You guys have so next next uh, Wednesday is the twenty fifth. What can you do between now and August 25th to create value in your business? Um, think outside the box, be the problem solver, take some inspiration, seven day sprint, right? Seven days. Like we don't need to worry about like doing it every day, but like, what if we just went all out for the next seven days? What is that going to do? So you guys have a great week. Thanks for tuning in and uh, I'll see you guys in the group. See you guys. See you.